This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. September 12th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Accident Investigation Division, follow-up section. The boss is Captain Vernon. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Bill's wife had gone out of town to visit relatives in San Diego. He didn't want to spend the weekend alone. I drew the lucky ticket. Kick on the porch light. I will as soon as you open the front door. Well, now, what good does a porch light switch do you inside the house? Outside is where you need it. Push the doorbell. Well, go ahead, punch it. It won't bite you. See? Rigged that up myself. Makes it real nice for friends when they drop by at night. What do you use for a doorbell? The old fist, Joe. Point in wasting electricity. Well, listen, I stand here in the dark, kick the lights on. Where do I do that? From the bathroom? Like everybody else, Joe, right here on the wall. And I wish you'd stop complaining. You said you didn't have anything planned. Besides, you need a little R&R. &R. R and R. Rest and recreation. I know what it means. What makes you think I can't find a little R and R around my own apartment? Come on, Joe. This is your partner you're talking to now. I know you. You spend too much time by yourself. Is that so? Yes, sir, that's so. Well, if you know me so well, suppose you tell me what I'm gonna brush my teeth with, what I'm gonna wear to bed tonight, or what clothes I'm gonna wear tomorrow and Sunday. That's another thing you do too much. What's that? You worry. That's all taken care of, Joe. Well, I don't suppose you want to stand there all night holding those groceries, do no, you? No, I don't. Well, why don't you put them down? Where? Well, where do people put groceries down, Joe? In the kitchen. In the kitchen. Well, how do you like it? Like what? Why, the wallpaper. Wallpaper? What wallpaper? There isn't any wallpaper. I know that. That's what it's all about today, Joe. Wallpaper is out. Painted walls are in. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. You'd think a smart young fellow like you would know that. But you didn't, did you? Now, come on, Joe. You don't have to kid me. I'm your partner. Admit it. Admit what? You really didn't know wallpaper was out, now, did you? No, I guess I missed it. Well, it's no wonder you live in a vacuum. No family, no home. What do you think I live at, the Y? Joe, an apartment is not a home. This is a home. Now, take off your coat and tie, put your iron out there on the closet shelf, and relax. Tonight, we're going to play a little pinochle with Robert Bass and Dan Patrick, neighbors of mine. Tomorrow, we're going to sleep in, watch the ball game on the tube, have a dinner fit for kings. We're going to live like sultans for two days, without harems, of course. Like I said, R&R. &R. All right, Joe? You're the boss, Bill. Oh, hi, Rhoda. Come on in. Hi, Bill. Where's Eileen? Uh, she's down in San Diego, visiting her sister. Is that this weekend? I thought she was going next. No, she left early this morning. Rhoda, this is Joe Friday, my partner. Joe, this is Rhoda Bass, Robert's wife. Glad to meet you, Joe. How you doing, Miss Bass? Oh, please, call me Rhoda. I think I hate Mrs. Bass almost as much as Mother. How many children do you have? This many, and I don't think I'll last until Monday. What happens Monday? Her kids go back to school. Joe's a bachelor, Rhoda. Oh, isn't that a shame? I beg your pardon? <laughs> Don't mind me. I get a little stir-crazy this time of day. How about a beer, Rhoda? Oh, no, thanks. One beer and I go away and never come back. I just came over to borrow some oregano, if you have any. Sure, I'll Say, get it Bill, for you. Say, Bill, how many years do I get for killing a door-to-door -door salesman? That's it. Why, would you bump one off? No, but I sure wanted to. Young, smart, I like broad. I couldn't get rid of her. Her and her scholarship fund. Yuck. You know what she had the nerve to ask after I'd already told her no? No, ma'am. She asked if she could come back and talk to my husband. And what'd you say to that? I told her I had a serious doubt about the legality of her mother's marriage and that my husband didn't discuss business with children or something like that. I see. Well, thanks, neighbor. Honestly, isn't there anything you can do about someone like that? Only if they make false or misleading statements. Oh, one look at this kid and you know she's never told the truth in her life. Is that so? 
Bill, you know Mrs. Anderson, nice old lady down the block, the one with the roses out front. Lost her husband last year? Yeah, that's her. Well, this little salesperson bragged how she sold that poor old woman $75 worth of magazines. If that isn't a lie, then it's got to be a crime. Probably, but if Mrs. Anderson doesn't file a complaint, there isn't much we can do, Rhoda. <laughs> yeah, I've been around Bill and Eileen enough to know that much, I guess. Oh, thanks for the spice, Bill. I'll send my dear husband Robert over as soon as he gets home. Oh, I'm glad to have met you, Joe. My pleasure, Rhoda. Say, Bill, since Eileen's out of town, you wouldn't want to keep Robert for the weekend, would you? People just won't turn off electricity when they're through with it. Now, my friends, we spread cream cheese on one slice of this pumpernickel. Having done that, we take a clove of garlic and crush it letting the juices fall on the cream cheese. Nice, huh? You betcha. And now, gentlemen, we are ready for the piece de resistance. You mean the coup de gras? We now take the other slice of pumpernickel, the one with the peanut butter on it, and place it firmly atop the one with the cream cheese and garlic juice. And that, my friends, is what I call a garlic nut butter sandwich. Delicious. And it goes very well with beer, as you will see. Bill. Yeah, Joe? Why are you cutting that into four pieces? Well, one for each of us. Rob? Gee, no thanks. I'm still full from dinner. Dan? Ah, uh, I think I'd better pass for the time being. The old ulcer has been kicking up lately. No way. It's your loss, you know. There's a whole different world going on around you, and you're keeping your eyes closed to it. You got to, or they'll water. Well, let's play cards. Yeah, good idea. Come on, partner. By the way, what do you men do for a living? Well, I, uh... I'm a systems analyst myself. Oh? What's a systems analyst do? I analyze systems. Makes sense. It's no joke. That's exactly it. I analyze systems to see if they can work with other systems, how they can be improved, or if they can't work, why? What he means is he's a glorified efficiency expert. There's a lot more to it than just efficiency. I mean, time and motion studies are part of it. But what it really boils down to is the system design logic, right? And does it interface with the other system design logic? Interface? Right. Let me give you an example. You had to put a dime in the computer, didn't you? LAPD has jurisdiction over the city of Los Angeles, right? During the daylight hours, we're not so sure at night. Well, anyway, the rest of the county is protected by the sheriff's department, right? Well, I thought you were going to tell us what interface was. I'm getting to that part. Now, give me a street where LAPD has one side and the sheriffs have the other. Vermont Avenue and 77th Division. Now, that's an interface where the transfer of function takes place. But it's the city limits. Everything outside of the city belongs to the county, Rob. And that's called an interface. Yeah, that's what my wife says about her cold cream. Beg your pardon, Dan? I said that's what my wife says about her cold cream. When she puts it on, it goes right interface. <laughs> Come on, deal the cards, Robert. <sighs> Laugh all you want to. But the time will come when whether we survive as a race of people will depend on how well we've analyzed our systems. You're seeing system breakdown all around you. Mark my words, the day will come when you'll call your systems analyst the same way you call your family doctor. Deal, Robert. Deal, Robert. I forgot how many each person gets. One apiece until they're all gone. Four in the crib. Oh, yeah. Joe, I understand you're a single man. Yeah, that's right. Save your breath, Dan. I've been working on him for years to start a family. He's a waste of time. Got his mind made up and cast in cement. It's a great life, Joe. It really is. I'll tell you something else, actuarially speaking. You know, insurance odds say on the average that a married man lives longer than a single man. Mr. Systems Analyst, you dealt the cards backwards. Oh, I'm sorry. No, leave him alone. They'll play. Hello. Oh, hello, Rhoda. There's a lady here who wants to talk to her systems analyst. Thanks, Bill. Bass here. Who is this? Oh, hello, Rhoda. No, I didn't tell him that. I said he could stay up until 10 o'clock if he helped. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. No, she told me you said she could. Well, how was I supposed to know you? Ask you? Why should I have to ask you? I didn't think she'd lie to me. You mentioned insurance. Is that your profession? Yeah, for 15 years now. And what I said about single men dropping dead before well, married yeah, ones yeah. is gospel. Really single good. men have more health problems than married men. There's more stress to living oh, alone. You show me a single man, and I'll show you a candidate for a All coronary. Right, and I'll show it to you where it really counts. Goodbye, Rhoda. Well, what's the score? What do you mean, what's the score? We haven't played yet. 
Oh, sure. I'll tell you what I think it is, Joe. Yeah, what's that? A fact of natural life. The human animal wasn't designed to live alone. It's bad for his health. Man is definitely a monogamist. That's right. The family is just like a system, and the human being functions best in a family system. Hello. It's for you, Rob. Thanks again, Bill. Bass here. Rhoda, I know your voice. No, I didn't say that to him. He said that you said there wasn't any reason to go. Well, how much is that going to cost? All right, Rhoda. Well, she did well I got she a hand lied. like a she foot. Told me that. That was a lie. What'd you say? Are you I said I got a hand like a foot. Rob should go wash his hands for dealing this mess. I'm not that good, huh? Good. I'll tell you the truth, Joe. I'll be lucky if I can open. If somebody sure got to have the cards. I sure don't. I guess it's my turn to open the bid. 150, and that's pushing it. Well, don't you want to wait for Rob? Oh, sure. Come on, Rob. Let's play cards. Goodbye, Rhoda. What's the score? We haven't played yet. Just pick up your cards and bid. I opened with 150. I'll bid 160. Answer the phone, Rob. Thanks, Bill. You want to bid, Dan? Mm, as rotten as this hand is, I think I'll just say 200 to see what old poor mouth over there really has. 250. It's not your turn to bid. Hey, Dan, it's for you. Well, thank you, Mr. Systems. Hello, this is Dan. Dan bid 200. 200, huh? That well, sounds like that? a preemptive bid. He's he trying to find out where the real strength right? in bidding lies. Well, 210. 250. Okay, Aha, that's why I don't have any clubs in my hand. You got them all. Go ahead, Joe. It's your turn to bid. 300. Okay, 350. Bye. It's not your turn to bid. It's your bid, Dan. I'm sorry, fellas, but I have to go. Jean just cracked up the car for the fourth time. She hurt? Oh, no. She just mangled a fender up against a tire, and it won't move. I've got to go get her. She's down in Long Beach. No wonder I got ulcers. That woman's going to be the death of me yet. It's too bad you have to go, Dan. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't stay, but I'll see you guys again. Nice to have met you, Joe. Nice to meet you, Dan. Aha, uh -huh, I was right. You nearly did have all the clubs in your hand. And a double pinochle. You had 560 points in your hand. Did you know that, Bill? Well, we can play three-handed pinochle just as easy as four. Answer the phone, Robert. Thanks, Bill. Bass here. Rhoda. I never you had a pinochle first. hand like that before in my entire life. And I don't get a chance to play it. It's not Goodbye, right, Joe. It's just not right. Uh, fellas, I'm sure sorry to have to do this, but I think I'm going to have to leave, too. Oh, come on. Evening's still young. Well, I got to handle a little crisis at home. Anything we can do to help you? I'm afraid not. You see, Rhoda's run away. Run away? Well, not run away like run away. I mean, she kind of had enough of the kids and locked herself in the bedroom. So? Well, she won't come out until I talk to her. We just call it running away as a family expression, you know? How long will it take you to talk her out of the bedroom? Oh, yeah. Well, a while. Well, what's a while? Uh, when will you be back, Rob? I don't think I'll be able to make it back tonight. That's all right, Rob. We understand. Nice to have met you. Maybe we can get a game together sometime in the future. Sure hope so. Well, I'll talk to you later, Bill. Thanks for stopping by, Robert. How about a little gin rummy? Sounds fine to me. What's the matter? All I bought was pinochle cards. <laughs> Joe, you in there? Yeah. Here's your pajamas, and I got a little surprise for you. They're yours to keep. Here, take them. You mean you're giving them to me? Yes, sir, as a present. Go on, take them. I can't accept these, Bill. They're too expensive. This is good material. Oh, no, they just look expensive. They're 100% Orlon triacetate rayon. Hey, you know that purple goes good with your eyes. Well, you know I can't take these. Why not? Because they were a present from somebody to you, now, weren't they? Joe, if that's what's worrying you, you just relax, pal. How's that? Bought them myself. division by only three percentage points. If Atlanta wins tonight in their battle with the Houston Astros, they could tie the Dodgers. The winning pitcher was Claude Osteen, who's 17 and 10 for the year. Why'd you turn the TV off? Because the game's over. What game? The Dodgers and the Giants. You fell asleep. Well, don't be silly. I wasn't asleep. I was just resting my eyes. What time is it? I have four o'clock. Four o'clock? Well, Joe, what in the world is the matter with you? Well, nothing, not a thing. Well, there sure is. What about the duck? What duck? The lemon-glazed duck we're having for dinner. 
Boy, sometimes I just don't understand you, Joe. What do you mean? Well, you knew we were having duck for dinner. You should have reminded me at 2 o'clock. I didn't know you wanted to be reminded. But you knew we were having duck. Boy, you know it's going to take all day to thaw that iceberg out. How would you know? There's more than one way to thaw a bird. What did you say we were having for dinner tonight? Boiled duck? No, I didn't say boiled duck. I said glazed. But I don't know why I bothered to talk to you anyway. You don't know anything about cooking. <laughs> Go ahead and put your hand on the burner. It's hot, you know. Yeah. You don't know anything about stoves either, do you? Now, let's see. Where's that recipe I copied down? Isn't that your work notebook? Yes, it is, Joe. Why? Where'd you get the recipe? From somebody we arrested? Of course not. Off of that lady who does the cooking show on TV. Oh, here it is. If I can only read my writing here. Sage, allspice, brown sugar, lemon. Joe, what's that look like to you? Burgundy or sherry? Well, looks like sherry to me. Huh, I don't have either one. I wonder if we could use muscatel instead. Bill, have you ever cooked glazed duck before? No, I haven't. Why? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering. Joe, if it's going to bother you to watch, why don't you just go in the other room, find an old movie on TV, and I'll let you know when dinner's ready. I just might do that. You do that. <laughs> Well, aren't you going to turn the TV off, Joe? Electricity costs money, you know. And don't tell me it smells good. I know that. Say, this really looks great. You did fine, partner. Of course I did. If I didn't look out for you, who would? Just because you're a policeman doesn't mean you don't like things nice. <laughs> I'll get the bottle of wine out of the refrigerator. I'll get that if you want me to. Good for you. Whoever that is, if they rang the doorbell, don't forget to punch it off when you're through talking to them. Did you know when you ring your doorbell, your porch light goes on? Yes, we know. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to bother you this late at night. Are you Mr. Gannon? No, I am. Can I help you? Oh, yeah, I'm terribly sorry to bother you this late at night when you're getting ready to eat and all that. But I was talking to that nice Mrs. Bass the other day, and she said I might talk to you. My name is Betsy Nichols. I live down the street. Yeah. Well, anyway, I go to this nursing college in East Los Angeles, and it's sort of a scholarship fund. Well, why don't you come in and tell us about well, it? Well, thank you very much. Oh, you have a lovely house here, Mr. Gann. Well, thank you. Well, you see, I'm on a partially paid scholarship fund, and I've run out of points. Sit down. And unless I get my points back up, I'll be dropped from school. Dropped from school? Oh, well, now we can't let that happen, can we, Joe? No. Now, what can we do to help you? Oh, if you folks can help me out, it'd be a real lifesaver. You know, I think the nicest people in the world must be right here in Eagle Rock. Well, what do you need? Oh, well, if you could take this magazine for three years, I'd get 20 points. Or if you could take these two together, I'd get 50. How many points do you need to stay in school? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I need 400. But I'm going to make it. I just know it. There are so many wonderful people in the world. Was Mrs. Bass able to help you? Yes, sir, but she couldn't do as much as she wanted to. And that Mrs. Anderson down the street, would you believe she helped me get over 300 points? Oh, what a wonderful, sweet old lady. What's the name of this nursing school, miss? WCNT, West Coast Nurses Training in El Monte. I see. Well, what do you think? Can we help this young lady? I certainly hope so. Well, why don't you go through her magazines and pick out a few? You know what I like. Between the two of us, we ought to be able to give her some points. I'll be right back. I left my wallet in the other room. Okay, let me take a look at your magazine list there. While soliciting door-to-door -door is not a crime in the state of California, Section 17500 of the Business and Professions Codes says it is a crime to make false or misleading statements in order to sell a product. Information, I'd like the phone number of West Coast Nurses Training in El Monte. Yes, ma'am, that's right. I see. You're sure there's no business by that name? All right, thank you very much. I called Bunko and talked to Lieutenant Cleghorn. I filled him in on the story the girl was using. He said that Bunko had a report of somebody using a nursing school con out in the Eagle Rock area, and they had checked and found as a matter of record there were no nursing schools anywhere in the Los Angeles area involved in scholarships or the selling of magazines. He said he'd send a team of Bunko detectives to Bill's house. Between us, Bill and I agreed to subscribe to $54 worth of magazines. In order for us to prove theft by false pretenses, money had to change hands. I had marked my money. 
Now all we needed was for her to give us a receipt or something that said that she had accepted the money from us. There you go, Mr. Friday and Mr. Gannon. I can't tell you how much this means to me. Between the two of you, I've gone up by 260 points. Is that right? Oh, yes. I know I'm going to make it now. You two are the grooviest guys I've ever met. Nice of you to say that. It seems a shame to have to change your opinion of us. Nothing could change my opinion. This might. What's that? We're police officers. You're under arrest for violation of Section 17500 of the Business and Professions Code. You mean I just sold to the heat? That's right. I should have known. What's that? You were going too easy. What do you mean by that? The sale you were too easy to sell. I sure had you two figured wrong. Oh, how's that? I had you down as the odd couple. Eight fifteen. The bunco officers arrived. They took the girl into custody along with the physical evidence. She would be transported to Sybil Brand Institute and booked. I sure wish people would turn the lights off when they're through using them. Well, let's get back to that duck. What'd you do with it? I didn't do anything with it, Joe. I stuck it back in the oven. What you know about cooking, I could put in my ear. Now, tell me the truth, Joe. If you were home tonight in that little wallpaper department of yours, what would you be eating? TV dinner? Maybe just a cold sandwich. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't do much cooking for myself. Nobody likes to eat alone. You said it yourself right there, Joe. Nobody likes to eat alone. Maybe there's still hope for you. Now, you notice something strange? No, not particularly. Well, I'm not asking you to carve. Every time you go to somebody's house, they always ask you to carve, don't they? No, not me. No, not you. Me. They always ask me to carve. Now then, what would you like, a drumstick? Any part's fine for me. Sure looks good. Is good, partner. Is good. You know about duck, don't you, Joe? What's that? Well, you're not going to find any white meat, Joe. Not on duck. It's all dark, you know. That'll be fine. Well, I didn't want you to ask for a slice of breast meat, thinking it would be white. No, I understand about duck. Good. Now, watch this, Joe, and you'll learn something about carving. Most people would cut down there and whack off the old drumstick. Now, that's not the way it's done at all. You start with the breast and carve right down through the middle, like this. A little. Oh! Well, you can't win them all. You know what I can't understand is how the outside can look so good and the inside be so dry. Now, listen, it's still early. Let's go out and have a steak dinner. I'll buy. Yeah, that's nice of you, Joe, but aren't you forgetting something? What's that? All of our money is down at Bunko for evidence. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right, and we won't get it back until Monday. Yeah. Seems a shame to waste all that good bird. What do you mean, good? That thing's hopeless. That's over the hill. It's dried out. Boy, you really don't know anything about food, do you? I'm surprised you don't starve to death. I feel like a fool just asking you this. What's that? Haven't you ever heard of duck hash? <laughs> The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On November 20th, trial was held in Department 41 Municipal Court for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was found guilty of giving false and misleading information in order to sell her magazines, a misdemeanor. Violation of 17500 of the Business and Professions Code is punishable by a fine of not more than $500 or six months in the county jail or both.